London has a Piccadilly line. London has a Victoria line. But only Manchester has a line that connects both. This is the Metrolink. It can boast 63 miles of track and 99 stops. It's the largest light rail network in Britain, and the second largest metro system after the London Underground. It's achieved that in only 30 years. I'll be honest, I almost feel bad covering it in just a single video. Greater Manchester is the second largest urban area in Britain in terms of population density. Its two biggest stations were Victoria and Piccadilly, which until 1960 was known as London Road. Yet there was no rail connection between them. Several ideas had been proposed to remedy this, including underground railways in the 1830s and 1930s. By the 1960s, it was clear that there was a desperate need for such a link. Traffic congestion in the city centre had become intolerable to the point where buses were simply not adequate transport anymore. A monorail was proposed connecting the two stations as well as Middleton and the airport. Monorails have never been a popular concept in Britain, so of course this didn't go ahead. Also considered and swiftly abandoned were people movers, guided busways and cable cars. The next idea, and one that Selneck, the public transport executive, were most keen on, was a project known as the Pickvick Line. This would have been an underground railway. In fact, early promotional artwork from 1970 depicts what appears to be a London Underground 1967 stock train. And I can't be the only one curious as to what one of those would look like in Metrolink livery. The line would have connected with a number of existing railway lines to provide an extensive network and would have used a specially designed class of train known as the Class 316. Unfortunately, central government weren't willing to provide the funds needed for such a large project due to a cut in public expenditure. The project was abandoned in 1976, and the Greater Manchester Passenger Transport Executive, successors to Selneck, were left to seek another solution. In the 1980s, another possible solution emerged. It was time to revive the tram. Trams in Manchester and its surrounding towns were nothing new. The first horse-drawn trams had appeared in 1877, and electrification followed in 1901. They provided a cheap and convenient service, and so were initially very popular. But as happened, well, almost everywhere in Britain, they were superseded by trolley buses and conventional buses. The service ended in 1949. Fast forward to the 1980s, and Britain was waking up to the possibilities of light rail. Light rail, as its name implies, doesn't require the kind of heavy infrastructure that conventional rail does. It's an ideal in-between solution, where passengers are too numerous for buses, but not numerous enough to justify a conventional railway. In 1984, the concept of a light rapid transit system was put forward. This would use street running through Manchester city centre, but would reuse existing rail routes elsewhere. In 1987, the Docklands Light Railway opened in East London. That same year, the concept was demonstrated on the now-closed Fallowfield Loop Line in Manchester, using a train borrowed from the DLR. The concept was a winner. This time, the government were willing to grant the funds, and the scheme was authorised by Act of Parliament in 1988. The first phase would consist of three sections. The heavy rail lines from Bury to Victoria and Altrincham to Oxford Road would be converted to light rail. In the middle, a line between the two would be built through the city centre, plus a branch to Piccadilly. This runs along the street, sometimes sharing the road, sometimes segregated from other traffic. Construction began in 1991, with the service beginning in 1992. Which is pretty good going, I have to say. Services were provided using Breda T-68 trams. The prototype body shell is preserved in the Manchester Transport Museum, a short walk from the Queen's Road stop. Unlike later tram systems, the Metrolink vehicles are high-floored, which means that tram stops have high platforms. This does mean that they can reuse old station platforms, but also means that tram stops on the street have to be quite substantial. The system was an immediate success, with passenger numbers per year averaging 15 million. 10 million was the estimate. 
It revitalised the old railway lines it took over, doubling the number of passengers using them. As I've said before with regards to other rail schemes, investment really pays off when it comes to increasing passenger usage. Naturally, expansion was planned. The destination had been chosen before Phase 1 had even been begun. Eccles via the new business district of Salford Keys. In 1999, the line to Broadway opened, and in 2001, the whole shebang was declared officially open. This was a gradual success, which is attributed to the line taking a rather indirect route. Still, a success it would become, and no fewer than four lines would be planned in its wake. This was Phase 3, and consisted of the Oldham and Rochdale line, the South Manchester line, the East Manchester line, and the Manchester Airport line. Manchester Airport and East Manchester were new lines. South Manchester used a disused line as part of its route, and the Oldham and Rochdale was converted from a heavy rail line. This phase was completed in 2014. In 2008, new branding was introduced, which included the current yellow tram livery, the current corporate logo, and even a specially devised typeface known as Pantograph. As Transport for London will tell you, having your own corporate alphabet is how people know you're serious. From 2009, new trams were introduced. The Bombardier M5000, which is what you see today. The track had to be upgraded to accommodate these. The most recent batch arrived in 2018. In 2010, a spur opened off the Eccles branch to Media City UK, part of a development in the Salford Quays area. In 2017, yet another line opened. This was the Second City Crossing, or 2CC for short. The Metrolink had proven so successful that a second line across the city was required to accommodate all those trams. The final branch was to Trafford Park, which opened in 2020. I say the final branch, but this is a network that's expanded with remarkable speed. There are plenty of proposals for extensions and extra stops. Give it another 30 years and even the current network might look puny by comparison. One interesting proposal is the introduction of tram train technology on a line to Stockport. Tram trains are a best of both worlds concept, where you have essentially trams that can keep pace with main line trains and can therefore be used on heavy rail alongside them. This opens up all sorts of possibilities for the future. But it's not just about trams and tracks, it's about passengers. With the obvious exception of the pandemic period, ridership on the trams has only increased over the years, with an even higher rate of increase in the 2010s. Passenger satisfaction has also shown a steady increase. Fares were simplified with the introduction of fare zones in 2019, and a contactless ticketing system known as Get Me There was brought in that same year, similar to the Oyster Card in London. You can also travel for free in the city centre, provided you have a valid train ticket from any Greater Manchester station to a station in the city zone, which I think is an excellent idea. So that's an all-too-brief summary of the Manchester Metrolink, and its ongoing history. In a little over 30 years, it's gone from a slightly faint-hearted compromise following the failure of an underground line, to a city icon in its own right. I don't know what the future holds for the Metrolink, but these trams are far from the end of the line. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll be honest, I regret that I only had one day in Manchester to film this, because I'd love to have explored the network more fully. What you've been looking at is mostly the line to Bury and the lines in the city centre, so I wouldn't be surprised if I end up making a return visit one of these days. Thanks as always to my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon, you are the replacement to my tube line. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio!